on this episode of Dad Sews, we are making these awesome toddler-sized furry flapped hats. Come, my minions. <laughs> Stay tuned. Dead Sews! Dead Sews! Dead Sews! Hey guys and gals and internet pals, thanks for stopping by for another episode of Dad Sews. I truly appreciate you stopping by here. Now, full disclosure, if you're new to Dad Sews, I always sew everything for the first time on camera. And I did that with these hats. But I wasn't really happy with the quality of the video. I thought it left a couple of things out. I didn't think it was very clear in some of my instruction, and I thought you deserve better. So you get to see the finished product, which never happens on Dad Sews, and it will sit there and you can revel in its gloriousness as we get down to making one of these hats. Now, I recently saw a off-Broadway production of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's basically the exact version of the claymation movie that we all know and love in real life. They're in reindeer costumes, there's puppeteers doing the misfit toys, Abominable is there, and of course Yukon Cornelius stole the show, but my kids loved this musical. So I got this Rudolph fabric that you can see here and here so I can make for my kids. Now my one-year-old daughter Lexi fits perfectly in this hat, and my three-year-old son Oliver wears the same size because it stretches just enough to fit that wide range. Now if you want to size up your hat, you can use something awesome like the seam allowance tool that I showed you guys a couple weeks ago. Hey, maybe you were one of the winners of those mini seam allowance tools that I gave away. Those are super cool. You should check out that video. All right, now for the liner of the hat, I have this. It's not faux fur. It was just called fluff stuff. I don't really know what it is. It looks like it almost has like a rose pattern on it. But I do know that when you cut it, it basically turns to snow. So you will have lots and lots to clean up. Luckily, I have four children, three of whom I can boss around with a broom. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This pattern is free, and you can click below to get this pattern. Now, there's a couple things I don't like about the pattern. One, there was zero instruction, and I thought, ha, I need to make a video for this hat. And two, it didn't tell you how much to allow for seam allowances, quarter inch, half an inch, eighth of an inch, it just didn't tell you. I am using the edge of my presser foot for my seam allowance. Now, depending on your machine, that can be a quarter to a little bit more of an inch. You'll just have to measure your foot, but that's the size I'm making it. That's the seam allowance I'm using. Now, a couple things I did like about this pattern is that it has a line on here that says direction of greatest stretch. Now, what does that mean? Well, your fabric stretches in one direction, but not the other. And you need to cut these properly because your hat, when you put it on your head, it stretches a little. It keeps it tight and it allows it to fit on a noggin like a one to three year old. So you wanna make sure that you cut in the direction of the stretch. Now, it has a long piece that isn't on the pattern. It tells you on the pattern hat top strip 4.75 by 13. You have to cut that yourself, so I made a template instead of just measuring the fabric. Ooh, more of that fluff snow. So I went ahead and cut that myself so that I'd always have it on the ready, and then I could use my seam allowance tool and my scissors to measure a bigger size if I wanted to upsize this hat. Super easy. All right, now this piece I did not cut with the stretch for the striped hat, or the arrows, I guess you would say, uh, because I wanted to line up all of the lines. These lines are tight, folks, tight. But this one I did with the stretch. I don't think this one matters as much as the side pieces, but that's up to you and your pattern and how well you want things to line up and look. All right, let's get to cutting. 
All right, now for the cutting, I'm gonna go ahead and use my handy dandy rotary tool, and I'm using the actual pattern. Now here's a tip, a lot of times, I transfer my patterns onto butcher paper or construction paper. You can get it in a big brown roll at Lowe's. And that way you don't mess up your original pattern and you can just tie it up or roll it up and throw it in your sewing gear and keep your original pattern intact. Now, because this is a free downloadable pattern, I don't care, I can print this off anytime I want. But if I was gonna upsize it, I would definitely lay this onto some of that butcher paper with my seam allowance tool and mark or cut a bigger size. It just makes everything so much easier to upsize. Now, of course, this has the line on it that says direction of greatest stitch. You do want to follow that instruction, but I also want to make sure I get this character on here. When I made the first hat for my one-year-old daughter, Alexi, my son, Ali Mac, said, Papa, I want a hat with Rudolph, not Clarice, because I had mainly cut out Clarice, not really planning it, just making the hat. So now I am strategically cutting around so I get more Rudolph. Now this means I'm gonna waste more fabric, but it also means I have a happy boy. And this is still the direction of the greatest stitch. So let's go ahead and get this cut. With our rotary tool, it's very, very easy. Just kind of roll on down the way. All right, and if you catch a little of your fabric, it is not that big a deal. If you catch a little bit of your pattern, it's not that big a deal. Of course, if you catch some of your fabric, it's not a big deal. That's what you want to cut. All right, here we go. And there we have it. There we go. Rudolph, right front and center. Now, the thing that Ollie Mac doesn't realize is this is the front flap that's going to be flipped up the other way. But I've gone ahead and pre-cut my side pieces, and all of them showcase Rudolph. So... He should be happy. Plus, he gets a bright red nose. All right, I'm gonna cut the rest of my pieces. They're exactly the same for cutting the fluff fabric as well. It just means you're gonna have snowy bits if you use what I use, or you can use faux fur, or you can just use another fleece, like a plain colored fleece. This is a very cheap project that you could mass produce for your whole family. Christmas of hats! And better yet, you can get this fabric cheap at fabricut.com. We've got our pieces cut out, but one more pattern cutting tip. If you have a piece like this that says fold, that's just so that they could get one whole piece onto a sheet of paper when you print it out. So when you're cutting your fabric, you want to make sure you fold it in half. And when you're cutting your pattern, you will put the fold right there on the fold of your fabric. That just allows them to fit a bigger piece on a smaller pattern. Okay, easy peasy where it says fold, put it on the fold. All right, we have the front flap and the ear pieces laid out here, right side up, fluffy side up, all right? And we're going to lay our fleece right side together. That means the side you're gonna see against the fuzzy side. Now, here's the thing, fleece most of the time doesn't have a right side, wrong side, but sometimes fleece has a softer side on one than the other. So if that's the kind of fleece you have, make sure you do it right sides together. Mine, it really doesn't matter. It is all the same. All right, we've got our fl front flap here. And on these pieces, what we're gonna do is just sew around the curves, and then we're gonna stop. We're not going to sew this flat line. And again, sewing around the curve, and stop not sewing that flat line. All right, let's take this over to the sewing machine. Now you want to make sure you pin this because the fluff stuff is slippery and even fleece will slide around on you sometimes. So just go ahead and stick a couple pins in, especially around the curves. That's where you wanna make sure you have your pins. And be sure to pull out your pins while you're sewing. You really don't wanna sew over pins. It can be done, but what you risk is, well, you risk breaking your pins, you risk breaking your machine. And honestly, I've had a needle hit a pin and fly up and hit me in the face. And luckily I wear glasses, so it didn't go into my eye. But I have read internet horror stories. If you want to hear some, look them up. They are readily available online. You can have some accidents sewing over your pins. Now, a lot of people are gonna be like, I sew over pins all the time. I've been sewing 25 years. I've been sewing 50 years. 
And I do think it's funny that people say, oh, I've been doing this for 50 years and it's never happened to me. Well, that's awesome. Um, I'm sure it has happened to somebody sewing for 50 years and for five years or for five days. Accidents happen, so I would just prefer that you avoid them. So don't sew over your pins. All right, when you're starting out, don't forget to back stitch. And remember, just go slow. You're gonna be working your way around curves, pulling out pins. There's no need to rush it. That's the thing I like about this Juki machine is that you can set the top speed for it so you can monitor yourself, kind of rein yourself in right at the very beginning. And also, if you stomp on the pedal, it's not just gonna start rearing up 60 miles an hour right away. It's gonna gradually bring you up to speed. And that has saved so many projects for me. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then I will be right back with the next step. Oh, also go ahead and sew your front flap. I almost caught my finger there. Sew your front flap and then we'll move on to the next step, okay? Be right back. Okay, so we have these two pieces finished. We are going to turn them right side out. But before we do, we need to make sure they're not bulky and it's a little more professional looking. So to do that, we need to cut away or get rid of some of this excess fabric. So on the convex curves, that's the curve that goes out, we're going to just simply cut in a notch like so. All right, we're gonna do that all around the convex curve. Just cut in another notch, just like this. Just keep going with them. And that gets rid of some of the excess fabric so that you can tuck that in when you turn it out. Now, on the concave curve, which is the inside curve, well, first I need to trim some of this excess fabric, which I'm going to do right now. All right, got rid of some of that. Now on the, the concave curve, all you're going to do is cut in a notch with your shears. So you will just clip there, 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 there. And what that allows you to do is when you turn it right side out, it's not bulky and you have this nice, beautiful, full curve. All right, there we go. Let's do that to both of these pieces and then we'll move on to our next step. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hey, we'll get back to the sewing tutorial in just a second. But did you know you can only get a Juki machine from licensed approved Juki dealers? Well, my sponsor, FabricHut.com, provided this Juki QVP Pro, and it really is a pro machine in your household. It comes with every foot you'll need, a tabletop so you can work on wide pieces like quilts, and it really is the answer to all your sewing problems. So, if you're interested in getting this top of the line, but not for top bucks model, go to fabricut.com slash dadsews.html and it will take you to a special page with a discount just for my fans. Also, here's a tip for today's tutorial. When you get to the part where you have to cut out a notch or a clip, you can use pinking shears to do that. Where can you get pinking shears? You guessed it, fabricut.com. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. Now it's time to start pinning the top of our hat. Take your two sides and your long strip that goes down the middle and grab your pins. All right, we're gonna put this long piece together right here on our side piece, pick a corner, and stick in a pin, just like so. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work our way around this curve. And be sure that you're not stretching the fabric too much when you do this. You can be tempted to stretch this long piece, and what you're gonna end up with is a piece that's too long if you do that. So just work your way around the curve without stretching it, and pin this bad boy together. Then we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side and in the lining. All right, there we go, about halfway there. You see how that's going around the curve? And it looks like you've got too much fabric, but trust me, by the time you get to the end, it should be just right. If not, you probably cut it wrong and you can go back and trim that long piece of fabric. See, boom corners meet. 
I'm going to put one more in right there and probably one here in the middle of these two pins. All right, now we just do the exact same thing to the other side and then we're gonna do the same thing to the liner and then we'll move over to the sewing machine. All right, now if I didn't say so before, when you pin the inside of the hat, ooh, I gotta be careful, I'll get stuck. You wanna pin the right sides together so you're sewing on the outside of your fabric. That way when you turn it out, it's nice, you don't see any seams. All right, now I am going to start sewing this fluff, which can sometimes be a pain. You might need to, uh, well, you don't wanna push it through. Never want to push your fabric through. Let your feet or foot do the work. But once you start piling up the fleece and the fluff stuff or faux fur or whatever you choose, you might need to adjust your tension just a little bit to get the thread running through your machine right. But that's going to depend on your machine. I'm sorry I can't give you a better, more exact answer for that. All right, let's start sewing nice and slow. And don't forget to backstitch. This is the inside of your hat. You don't want it falling apart and looking bad. All right, slow and steady wins the race. I even have it on a turtle setting on my machine. It has a turtle and a rabbit. And I gotta tell you, I always am on that turtle setting, not the rabbit. Now, another thing, when you're sewing the top of your hat, you want to really make sure that you're not catching the other half of your hat underneath the needle, okay? That's very, very important. Otherwise, you're gonna be pulling out a seam ripper and ripping some seams. Trust me, I've done that stuff so many times. You think you're sewing a perfect seam and you're like, oh, it was a little thick in one spot. Yeah, that's because you sewed the other half of your garment. All right, so just be careful out there, folks. All right, we're coming up around the edge of our curve here. That wasn't so pretty, what I just did, but Guys, this isn't going to matter. It's the inside of your hat. It doesn't have to be pretty. So many people are afraid to start sewing because they're like, it's not going to look perfect the first time. Yeah, duh. <laughs> Guy doesn't go out and say, hey, I want to learn construction and build a brand new high rise and expect it to look perfect. No, you build a dog house. Okay. And that dog house is going to look like dog stuff. It's not going to look great the first time, all right? Trust me, I built an ugly doghouse. My second one was fabulous, though. So just make a hat, waste some fabric, waste some thread. You know what? Odds are your first one is going to look fine. So it's just going to have a little bit of imperfections that probably only you will notice. If you're sewing for the first time and like, I'm going to sew this on my first go-round. Well, that's an error on your judgment, not your sewing. All right. Now back stitch here, and now I'm going to sew the other side of this, and then I'm going to sew the outer layer, and we will start putting together our hat. Oh, this is exciting! We have the top outside and the top inside of our hat complete. Now turn them right side out, or at least the top part, because that's the next part up, and then take the ear piece, little ear flaps, and we're going to line them up with the top of our hat. Now take a couple pins and find the center point of your hat. You just fold it together like so. See, and you find that little center point. We're just going to stick a pin in there just to mark it, okay? And then you're going to do the same thing with your ear flap piece. Go ahead and fold that in half, find your center point, and then mark it with the pin. Now why are we doing this? Well, we're gonna have corresponding center points that we're gonna mark on our fabric so that we can make sure we sew it correctly. So once you find and mark all of your center points, which just takes a minute to do, yes, you could eyeball it. And people are gonna eyeball your crooked hat. That's the way it's gonna go. They're gonna say, you made that yourself, didn't you? That's what you never wanna hear, is somebody just to look you up and down, just hmm. You made that yourself, didn't you? Now, it's one thing if they know you're a seamstress and they assume that you made your own clothes, but you don't want them just to look at something and say, oh, your blind old grandma made that, didn't they? <laughs> or you were following that kooky dad sews guy again, weren't you? And you followed one of his, his tutorials and made a crooked hat. 
All right, so we've got that pinned together. You also want to do the same thing with your front flap, just fold it in half and then stick a pin right here in the middle. All right, start pinning this together. You're going to take your front flap and you're going to put them right sides together. Now, right sides together means fabric to fabric, okay? And you're going to have your center line right there and go ahead and pin it in place like so. And then I'm going to take some more pins and go ahead and put a pin in the corner, just like this. You see how we did that? We've got a pin in the middle and then a pin on the edge. Now we have our ear flaps, which we have that middle point found with our pin. There it is. We're going to line that up with, look at that, perfectly lines up with the center point of the back of our hat, okay? Once you have this pin in the center point, you can go ahead and pin the ends and the corners too. There we go, just like that. And when everything is said and done, it should match up. Look at that, line up perfectly. Okay, so we are going to baste our hat. Now, does that mean we're gonna dip it in our leftover turkey juices? No, and that's a horrible joke, bad dad joke. We are going to use a basting stitch, and on my QVP machine, that just means turning the stitch up to five. You're taking a basic straight stitch that's normally close together, and you're lengthening the stitch as far as you can go. That makes it easy to use your seam ripper and pop out that seam later, and it just holds everything together until we do our final stitch with the lining of our hat. So. Dial up your machine, however it is on your machine, look it up in your manual or, hey, they make this thing called YouTube, it's awesome. And uh, go ahead and start sewing all the way around. Be careful when you get to the thick parts, okay? Um, you just gotta be very careful that your machine goes over them. And if you have to, which I think I'm going to, adjust my tension just a little bit to make sure that it goes over those humps and I get the proper stitch. All right, go ahead and sew that up, and then we'll be right back with our final step. And you're gonna have a hat in like, like two, three minutes. It's gonna be awesome. All right, we're at the next to the last step. We have a hat, we just don't have a lining. So take your hat, the right side, and make that the inside of the bowl, okay? And then flop down your flaps inside of the bowl. Then we're going to put the right side of our hat, the soft side of our lining, inside of the bowl, just like so. And you can line up the center points like we did earlier, or you can just really just find the seams and go ahead and put a pin there at the seam. Now this is the next to last step because there is a little bit of hand sewing involved. I'm sorry! I'm sorry if you felt misled that you could do everything on the sewing machine, but I never said you could. We're not going to finish sewing the whole way around with the sewing machine because we have to turn the hat out, okay? So on this last bit on the back panel of the hat, I'm not going to finish sewing that. I'm going to leave it open from here to here, and that's going to allow me to pull the flaps out of the hat and flip the lining the right way out, and we'll have a hat. So I'm going to finish pinning this up, then we're going to sew it and complete our hat. Okay, if you have a tabletop extension, you can rip that off of your machine and you can move it to the side and it'll make things a heck of a lot easier. And you can go ahead and start sewing around the machine like this. Oh, so much better. All right, drop our foot down and remember to put your stitch back to normal. Uh, mine was at that uh, five, so it was that nice long basting stitch, but we wanna drop it back down to normal and then put our foot down and sew, sew, sew. Now remember, we don't wanna sew over all of that back flap, all right? Remember to leave yourself a hole so you can turn out your hat. Turn it out. All right, almost there, almost done. So close. Remember, if you have a hard time going over those thick spots, just adjust the tension on your needle, okay? Come on, you guys are old hat at this. Ah! Hat. Oh, man, that joke's for days. All right, and past the seam, and I'll have left just enough to turn out. I'm gonna go ahead and backstitch there too. All right, 
Well, here is the moment of truth. And pull that last pin out. You don't want to leave any pins in your kid's hat. I'm just saying. They will frown upon that. All right. Man, I left myself a bit too small of a hole, but that's all right. It should, it should work out. Leaving a small hole is nice when you go to sew it back together, uh, but it's a bit of a pain in the butt when you're trying to turn things out because you have to pull all of that stuff out of that tiny little hole. But I've witnessed childbirth, so it's possible. It's possible, guys. All right, here we go. Oh, so, so close. Now I could skip ahead, but you should see how difficult this can be if you leave your hole too small. Oh, there's a flap. It's like getting a leg. I see a leg. It's breech. Oh my goodness. All right, leave yourself a little more room than I did, okay? Okay, guys, now once you have your hat turned out, you will want to close up this hole and you want to use a ladder stitch for that. A ladder stitch is a hidden stitch. I am linking a video below. I didn't make a ladder stitch video, but the one below you can click on, it's super easy, or just go to dadsos.com slash ladder stitch. It will take you there. It's a great video. That's how you close up your hole. Now you could do some other extras. Uh, most people sew this open for kids, but you could make a permanent button like this. Uh, you could put straps on the side so you can tie the sides up. All you would do is put some fleece strips into that curve right before you sew it. That's easy peasy. I'm going to put a red nose like this on my son Ollie Max hat, but you could use one of those flashing bulb noses that they have around necklaces for kids at Christmas time, or you could put a big red jingle bell. I think that would look really cool as well. Man, I am super happy with how this hat turned out. I hope to see pictures of yours as well. Now stay tuned, you're gonna see pictures of my daughter Alexi, who's one year old, wearing her hat and maybe dancing around, and Ollie Mac as well. If you like this video, please click a thumbs up below, give it a like on Facebook, give it a share on Facebook with your friends on your wall or on Twitter. I'm at Twitter, at Dad Sews. Thank you so much for watching. I really, truly appreciate you stopping by and I will have a new tutorial out for you soon. Dun, 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 dun. Dad this production is brought to you by the Plaid Dad Blog Podcast Network. For more information, visit us at plaiddadblog.com.